Hello. It's another dull rainy day here in the north of England, so I thought I would just make a video, more or less, off the top of my head, though there's a little bit of preparation gone into it. It's really a video response to something I saw oh, a couple of weeks ago now. But actually what I saw a couple of weeks ago is, is a video that's been up for well over a year and it was a video on Two of Owls channel, uh, excellent channel, and the title was something like Why Do We Shuffle? And it, it was a short discussion about why when we're playing with our cards, when we're doing a tarot reading if you like, why do we shuffle the cards? Once they're out of new deck order, why do we shuffle them further? And there were a lot of possible answers, both in the video and in the comments. Um, here, sort of a year or more on from that video, so far on that I, I don't really call it a video response, really, I suppose. It's a bit late. I thought I would give my two pennyworth of thoughts about why we shuffle, and I hope the answers might be a little bit different to what we might expect uh, about that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate this whole business uh, of using cards and, and shuffling cards I'm going to relate it to the concept of ritual because I think there's a lot about doing a tarot reading spending some time playing with the cards that relates to theory of ritual. Now ritual has a variable reputation um, among some secular minded people you'll hear expressions put about like mere ritual or empty ritual. In the world of anthropology and sociology and sort of general philosophical viewpoints, rituals are rather different. Ritual is seen in some ways as as a form of communication in itself, as a kind of communication that kicks in when language isn't enough or when language reaches its limits. I'll start with the first quote I was going to give from this very big and extremely difficult book by the very great anthropologist, late anthropologist, Roy Rappaport. Um, this is a very important book, but it is so difficult, very difficult. And of course it looks at the importance of ritual in human life. And as one might expect at the very beginning, he looks at some definitions. And I'm just going to read his, his definition straight from the beginning of the book. I take the term ritual to denote the performance of more or less invariant sequences of formal acts and utterances not entirely encoded by the performers. Now that is, there's a lot of nutshelling going on in there and it's very good nutshelling. One of the things I want to focus on there is, is actually that last bit, that the the acts and the words that go with ritual. If I'm performing some sort of ritual, any kind of ritual, it's not entirely up to me how I do it. The point is that to an extent, and very often to a large extent, and sometimes entirely, I'm doing what someone has done before. That's the bit about 
the acts and the utterances are not entirely encoded by the performers. It's not entirely up to me how I do this. The other bit there is the, um, the more or less invariant sequences of acts and utterances. This idea that a ritual performed once will be performed in almost the same way. Um, pretty much the same way next time. Rituals can evolve, but they evolve slowly, and I think it's rare and exceptional for rituals to undergo very rapid evolution, or revolutionary evolution, you might say. And so I think the business of doing a tarot reading has this element of ritual. And part of the ritual is shuffling the cards. We do it because other people have done it before. It's part of how you do the whole business. We shuffle because our thread would wait shuffled. We shuffle because Levy shuffled. Uh, we shuffled because all of those people going back in in tarot history shuffled. At least we think we did. They probably did. But the point is, people have done and people do. It's part of the business. That kind of begs more questions than it answers. Uh, it smacks of saying, well, we do it because we do it. And I think there is more to it than that. We don't just do it because we do it. And it might be fruitful at this point to look at what some people think that ritual can do, what it can accomplish. And far from the people who say things like empty ritual or mere ritual, I believe that ritual can accomplish a great deal and there's this excellent book, compared to the last one, this very, very readable book, it's a really brilliant book, The Anthropology of Religion by Fiona Bowie. This is what got me started on anthropology of religion and ritual. Um, and she has a couple of chapters on, on ritual in this book. And she very eloquently says in, in, at the beginning of, of the chapter on ritual theory, that rituals can channel and express emotions, guide and reinforce forms of behaviour, support or subvert the status quo, bring about change, or restore harmony and balance. And she also notes that rituals also have a very important role in healing. And she goes on further than that. Now, that is an astonishing claim to make of what this kind of human behaviour, ritual, can do. I don't think that's an exhaustive list. I think rituals do other things as well. And I think in a tarot reading, we're talking about ritual guiding forms of behavior, the ritual acts of a tarot reading set up how both the reader and the querent are expected to behave in this act. But I think it does more than that. If we're reading for someone else, And I think what shuffling the cards does, given that we do it at the beginning of the reading ritual, the, the, the reading business, we, we do this ritual of shuffling the cards. I think part of what it does is to define the space in which the reading is taking place. What shuffling the cards does is to say it's to establish that this this is the tarot reading space 
and it says to the querent and to the reader in this space we know roughly what's going to happen next we don't know what cards we're going to turn up but we know how we're going to select them we know we know that there are rules even if only in my own mind about how those cards are going to be interpreted we know if we're reading for a querent that what we're setting up here is in some ways a pastoral encounter that we have to be aware of their spoken and unspoken physical emotional and spiritual needs in performing the reading and shuffling is a ritual that acts as a prelude to all that and it actually gives the signal to the reader and the querent that this is what's going to happen if you like it sets up not just a ritual space not just a sacred space even but a safe space in which we know what's going to happen next and it's going to be okay so I think we've come a long way from shuffling the cards just being empty ritual or mere ritual uh, just a thing that we do it actually accomplishes real things for the reader and the querent what happens when we're on our own do we shuffle the cards when we read for ourselves or when we're practicing reading practicing putting the cards together and seeing what happens I do I think probably most of us do we give the cards a shuffle sometimes I'll get a deck out and I'll shuffle the cards and that's all I'll do I'll get the deck out, shuffle the cards and put them away again. And that's just play, really. But shuffling the cards when we're dealing for ourselves, when we're um, reading for ourselves, when we're meditating for ourselves. Surely we don't have to set up this safe ritual space because we know what we're doing. And I think there, there's one final input I'd like, and it's a rather enigmatic one from probably one of the 20th century's most difficult philosophers. But it's a thought that has stuck in my mind ever since I first read it many, many years ago. And I think it has something to say about this. And it, it's Wittgenstein, Ludwig Wittgenstein, um, in some of the brief notes that he made on ritual um, after reading somebody else's work on ritual and it, it's quoted in this book another lovely book by Stanley Tambaya called Magic Science Religion and the Scope of Rationality lovely book that gives a very good overview on well what it says in the title really and he quotes Wittgenstein <clears throat> as saying Wittgenstein says this To burn in effigy, to kiss the picture of the beloved. This is naturally not based upon a belief in certain effect on the object which the picture represents. It aims at a satisfaction and also obtains it, or rather it aims at nothing at all. We act in such a way and then feel satisfied. Now, as with virtually everything Wittgenstein said in a very small space, I think he's saying an awful lot there, uh, an awful lot than what appears on the surface. It almost appears as if he's saying these ritual acts, you know, and, he, and he links these two as, as almost opposite. One is to kiss the picture of your beloved. And, you know, almost the opposite of that is to burn somebody in effigy. He's almost... See, it seems to be saying, going back to saying, well, we just do it. But he's not. He's saying a lot more than that. What he's saying is, don't be mistaken, this isn't, in his opinion, this isn't, um, you don't burn somebody in effigy and then look at the real person and expect to see them on fire. The, the burning in effigy isn't meant to, to actually accomplish what it portrays. 
And equally, nobody is in any illusions that if you kiss the picture of someone you love, then you're kissing the person you're not. You're kissing the picture. Of course we all know that. Of course we do. And he's pointing that out. But I think what he's actually saying is ritual is a kind of form of communication even to oneself of something that language can't express. And I think when it comes to things like shuffling cards for ourselves, it's more than just, say, setting the mood. The parallel I've, I've sort of come to think on is, oh, what a fortuitous card. The parallel that I've come to think about is that in the Catholic Church and in some parts of the Anglican Church, especially the more old-fashioned parts. There used to be a thing that when the priest puts on the vestments to say Mass, they don't just walk in off the street and chuck the vestments on like they were an overcoat or something like that. There is There, there are prayers to be said for each item of the vestments that are put on. There are rituals to be observed. And what I think that does, and what I think shuffling the cards for ourselves does, is it actually identifies us with all the people who have ever done this before, and all the people who ever will. It puts us in that stream of continuity within a community it identifies us as being among the people who do this people who may have wildly differing ideas as to what they're doing and why they're doing it but nevertheless identify themselves as a community who do tarot who tarot and that ritual of shuffling the cards says to ourselves this is who I am and this is why I'm doing this. So there we are. Just some thoughts on a rainy afternoon on why do we shuffle the cards. Thanks for watching.